In this video, we'll look at popular CSS property codes that you can use to customize any list layout and what they do. And I'll also show you how to look up all CSS codes that are currently available to use on your lists. Then at the end, we'll go over how to find any selector code so you can use those property codes on any part of any list layout. This is an advanced tutorial for people who want to be list designers, so you need to know the basics on installing a list layout first and making some simple changes to your CSS, like changing the background. If you aren't familiar with those techniques, please see my beginner videos linked below so you can install a pre-made layout and make basic changes like changing a background. Now, after you've learned the basics of installing a layout, you probably know that to edit a layout code, you use a variety of CSS codes to customize your list how you want. For example, you need to add or edit background image codes to change the background image for those sections. Background image is a property code, and the code that names the section is the selector. I'll show you all the popular property codes that we use to customize a list. These work on any list layout as long as you apply them to a selector in your CSS. Afterwards, I'll show you how to get any selector for your list. I'm demonstrating the codes with Inspect Element, which is a tool in Firefox that you can use on any list layout as well. Just right-click the page in Firefox to access it. And I already have a whole video on this tool linked under this video. Now, background color is a really useful basic code that can be set to a named color like red or blue, or an HTML color which you can look up on Google, or RGBA colors like so. In an RGBA color, the first three numbers control the amount of red, green, and blue, and the last number controls the opacity or transparency of the color. Height and width control the dimensions of a section and are essential codes to use on any layout. Padding is useful for sections with text to move the text inside around. Border radius will make your boxes look good since you can add rounded corners. The higher the pixel amount, the more rounded it is. Position is a really important code that can be combined with top and left property codes to move sections around. Relative position will usually move a section from its original spot when you combine it with top and left codes. Position absolute will de-anchor it from its original spot and give you more freedom of movement with the top and left codes. And position fix will fix it in place on the screen at all times. Top and left can be pixel amounts or percentages too. Percentages are useful when you're using the fixed position. Margin top and margin left can also be used to move sections around. Border will add a border which you can control the thickness and color of. Box shadow is a little complicated, but you can control the shadow with the pixel amounts afterwards and the color code at the end, as you can see in my example here. Hopefully you should be familiar with background image by now and changing images as shown in my previous videos. But basically in the parentheses here, we add a direct link from an image we uploaded to Imgur.
you might want to adjust the width and height of a section to see an image better after you've added a background image to that section. But you can also use background size with cover or contain settings to automatically fit an image to that section. You can also combine this with background repeats that to no repeat to stop images from repeating. Background size can also be a percentage amount, which lets you zoom the image in or out. Background position can be one or two words, which are put on screen to set the position. Opacity lets you control how transparent something is, and you can still interact with it even when it's set to zero and is invisible. Visibility hidden also makes it hidden from view. Pointer events set to none is good when you want to see something, but don't want the links on it to work, and you also don't want people to be able to interact with it. Display None will completely remove a section from the layout. Z-Index is the position of something in front of or behind other elements on the screen. The lower the number, the more it goes behind other sections, and with the high number of Z-Index, it will go in front of everything else. Text Align is useful for removing your text too. Text shadow is like box shadow and makes your text stand out a little better. Color will color the text and is very important to any layout and can also be um, RGBA colors and HTML colors. Font family can be any font, but it will only show the font you have installed on your device. Text decoration can add effects, but most people turn it off with the None setting. Font size is used on almost every layout to control the size of a particular text. Cursor you don't see used very often, but it can be useful when people hover over parts of your list and you want to interact with their cursor and make it look different. So far we talked about property codes, but selector codes are important to find too when customizing your list. You can find selectors with the inspect element tool I've been using. Just activate the tool and click on the upper left I outlined here and then point to a section and its selector should appear near the cursor. And when you click on a section, it also shows the selectors in the tool on the right and the left. You can also go to Style Editor to view the CSS files being used for codes on the layout and also make edits here. As a last resort when looking for selectors, click on the section you want the selector for with the tool and then right click the section in the HTML and choose Copy CSS Selector. As a tip, remember that if a property code doesn't seem to work like here, just add explanation mark important at the end here. You can also try our fully mapped layouts to make selectors easier to find since all sections are color coded and many selectors are already added to the CSS file. 
There's one more code to tell you about and it's content. With content, it's possible to make new text and a new section. You need to copy a selector first and then add after or before at the end as I do here. Then assign it the content property with quotations and text, and the section will pop up with that text. You can assign other property codes that I've already shown you in this video and create a whole new section this way. You can also add hover to a copied selector and make a new section that will appear when you point your cursor at the original selector section on the list. Remember, at any time you can copy the code changes you make from inspect element and then paste them to your own CSS and save it to put those changes on your list. This is how many designers create new list layouts. I've covered all the important CSS codes list designers use here, but all other CSS codes can be found at W3School's CSS section with examples including codes like animation and filter. And lastly, for troubleshooting, if your codes don't seem to work, just add explanation point important at the end before the semicolon. And also check out W3School's CSS to see how property codes are properly used. This helps when you need to see working examples of complicated codes like animation. So good luck and be sure to share your finished custom list designs with us.